over 40% of the time, people who think that they're hungry are actually thirsty. For anyone out there who does want to lose weight, there's a really strong likelihood that you think that you're starving and you just need to drink a glass of water and just reevaluate. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Barely. How do I start the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? Most unselfish thing a person can do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. YouTube, what's up today? We're going to talk all about getting shredded. I brought an expert in order to do that. Someone who literally used to work out five hours a day as a pro athlete, an Olympic athlete, and he's going to show you exactly how he stays just that fit aesthetically on one to one and a half hours per day, four days a week. So convincingly, so that I actually invested inside of his product myself because I was like, man, I've interviewed hundreds of health experts over the years. Yet there's certain people that you trust and they actually do the things that they teach and they're getting amazing results themselves. And I want to do the same. Now, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button first off if you like this video, but also go and hit the subscribe button with the bell notifications. I do interviews of some of the biggest experts in health, wealth, and relationships specifically for businessmen out there every single week. So you're not going to want to miss the episodes. These are people that you'd have to invest thousands or tens of thousands of dollars to learn from that I use my network and resources in order to bring them to teach you 100% for free. Also, I said I jumped into this fitness program. You're going to actually find that in the actual YouTube description, the link with also a gift, a promo code, which is BDB, which is for Billion Dollar Brotherhood, BDB in the in the promo code section. When you put that in, you actually get all six of those programs for the investment of one, and you'll see one of the best deals I've ever seen. I easily invest in it. I know you will as well. So go ahead and check that out. Again, my expert today is actually an Olympic athlete, was an Olympic athlete, was a pro athlete, a phenomenal guy that owns Chalk Fitness, also performance, owns a phenomenal gym and online app that we're all going to learn from. Welcome, my friend, Ryan Fisher. Ryan, dude, welcome to the BDB podcast. You made it happen. You're in my studio, even though you're hundreds maybe thousands is yeah. it thousands of miles i think it's your, thousands your studio, of miles i'm in my kitchen <laughs> i love it dude and i've seen some of your videos on instagram if people haven't checked out your instagram yet let's just do it right now go open up instagram and it was so funny because the first time i ever looked at your meals it was like a like wrap with a little bit of this like avocado oil mayonnaise with a little bit of this certain sour cream with a, a yeah. little bit of turkey meat and then a little bit of sriracha. And I was like cracking up. I was like, honey, he just said this is one of his favorite recipes. I was like, I have not, because we hadn't met yet, right? Yeah. Like, what do you mean his favorite recipe? She's like, that's exactly what you would eat. And I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, like that's exactly. So I call them right. dude meals. And like everybody's who's just like a dude is like, they just get obsessed with them. So it's actually gotten like a lot of hype. Like a lot of people get super, super hyped on them. Is that like how you would make meals as well? Or you secretly enjoy like chefing it up every once in a while? And, like, no, I never cooking? chef it up. Like yeah. even like I have girlfriends come over and like, it's like, I'm going to make dinner and I'll literally, I have this thing I call meat cereal. And it's just like a bunch of ground beef. I put it into a bowl and then like, I put some seasonings and stuff in it with a spoon and I'm like, here you go. <laughs> that was actually like one of the things on your Instagram. I was going through like all the different, the bro meals and like yeah. all these different things. And I was like, that's freaking hilarious. It was like meat, meat with avocado, <laughs> meat with salt, pepper, and like this extra thing. And I was like, this is so funny because I can't tell you how many times, like, like I'm trying to hit certain goals, right? So it was like, I, I want to make sure I get my protein and stuff. So actually, let's even crack it open with this. For some of the guys that are listening, you had this funny story that was like, have you ever seen a fat T-Rex before? And it was like, no, these need to eat like 300 pounds of meat every single day or whatever it was. Oh yeah, that was a funny video. Yeah, it was like way back in the day, I was like stalking a little bit for the interview. And I was like, oh, this is so funny. Cause like people think that to be a, an athlete, maybe you can debunk this for me. If you want to be an athlete and, and be like the most shredded person on the planet, you should kind of know like what you're eating, protein, carbs, fats, maybe calories, knowing how much food's going in. Cause if, if it's not tracked and measured, it can't be changed. Yet there's a lot of people out there that might be like, man, I don't have the bandwidth for that. Like that seems really, really hard. And, and at the end of the day, it's like, what's the point for you? Like, where do you stand on all that stuff with like knowing how much you're eating or knowing how, is there a specific macro protein, carb or fat that you really think is most important? Break that down for me. 
I think it's most important for everybody to hit one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And then I think everything else after that is kind of like up for grabs. So like, if you, let's get, I mean, like, let's just throw it all, all on the table. Like if you want to lose weight in general, you need to be in a caloric deficit. I don't care how you do it. But what I will say is I just had like this conversation with my mom, like literally just a few days ago. And she's like, Ryan, I want to lose weight. But like, as I've been getting older, like my skin's been getting like saggier or whatever. And it's like, she's like the classic girl who wants to be like toned, right? So like, you can't be toned or, and as a man, you can't like have like a muscular looking body, like a muscular tone. I don't want to say tone for men because it doesn't sound right. But in general, people who want like, you know, like lean muscles, they want that really cool look. That's a significant amount of muscle with a significant amount or decrease in body fat. So like for you to have that muscle, you need a certain amount of protein each day. So what happens is somebody's like 300 pounds and their goal is to just eat nothing and lose all the body weight. But when you don't eat protein, you actually lose muscle as well. So if you keep at least your body weight and protein, you usually don't lose about any muscle mass at all. They have studies that show even in a big caloric deficit, you won't really lose a lot of muscle mass. So what will happen is you're just gonna be losing strictly fat and you're gonna look amazing. So everybody's goal should be to keep your protein high so that even when you do want to lose weight, you're going to keep that muscle and it's going to keep you looking as good as possible. And so you're um, saying that body weight or like lean body weight, what's like, because obviously the guy that's 300 pounds probably shouldn't be pumping down 300 grams of protein. I'm not sure. You tell me, but. So it, I have a big argument with this all the time is like I still think that person should eat 300 grams of protein because if I told him to eat 300 grams of carbs or fats, which by the way is why we're here it would be no problem for him. The reason is because obviously that person's eating too many calories to get to 300 pounds. And if we multiply four calories per gram by 300 grams of protein, it's only 1200 calories. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's just the type of food that it is, is not something that is something that you might not want to eat. But if you did eat 300 grams of protein, you'd probably be pretty full and you probably wouldn't want to eat all the other carbs and fats. So, I mean, realistically speaking, like, let's just go with like a pound of chicken. Doesn't sound nearly as appetizing as an entire pizza, which would have a whole bunch of fat and a whole bunch of carbs. That so, is inter- that, dude, that it makes so much sense too, because it's like people think, oh, I'm hungry. Have you ever had those times where you're like, and for the guys that are listening, they're like, man, I'm hungry. And then someone's like, well, I could cook you this. And you're like, oh, no, that sounds terrible. Like, all of a sudden you feel like really full because it sounds like crap. But you're like, but I could definitely eat ice cream. You know, Did you actually like, know that over 40% of the time, people who think that they're hungry are actually thirsty. That's crazy. But like for anyone out there who does want to lose weight, there's a really strong likelihood that you think that you're starving and you just need to drink a glass of water and just reevaluate. And I think the best times to like really throw this in is after you've eaten a whole bunch of food and you're like, man, I'm still hungry. You probably haven't drank any water with that meal at all. And then at night you're like, oh my God, I'm dying. And most likely it's because it's the end of the day and you haven't drank enough water. So there's like, it's a 46% chance. So it's like almost 50, 50 chance that you're probably thirsty. Crazy. So we know that all right this is my body weight and even like not just lean body mass because people can overcomplicate it and they're like well i'm like this fat and like my body i gotta go like get in a float tank and like make sure i could check my body fat so i know exactly how much protein and i'm that type of guy right like well i, I bought this program once and like there was inside of it was all the workouts but i didn't know how long to rest in between each each like set and i was freaking out because i was like like, what if it's 30 second rest and I'm not going to get the same results? Or what if it's one minute 30? Like, I was freaking out. So I like emailed into all their support and I'm like, I need rest times. Like, which one's which? And it was very different, actually. Like, some of them were shorter and other ones were longer. And I was like, doesn't that change everything? So for me, that like kind of puts it to rest. You're like, it's not that big of a deal, either body weight or lean body weight, as long as you're getting like it in. And it made sense to me that. You know, it's like you kind of overeat protein. It's still not that many calories compared to overeating other things is really easy. And then you talked about water and being thirsty since we're kind of like already on this. And I just want to pump out, I mean, for guys right now, like that already should be something that you go implement and something that maybe, you know, like I know, but like I went through a neck injury and then I just got sick, like you talked about. And it's been like a whirlwind where I haven't been tracking how much protein I'm eating. And I'm like, all right, that's what I needed just to be like, you want to be 
the not tone flabby freaking piece of crap. Cause like when I lost 60 pounds, dude, I did it starving myself. And the first compliment, I don't know if you call it a compliment that I got taking off my shirt was my stepmom looks at me and goes, you look emaciated. You need to like lift weights or something. You're like, you need to go to the gym. Cause I'd starve myself all the way down to like nothing. Like, Oh, finally, like I don't have that much body fat and take off my shirt. And it was like, you look emaciated, you look terrible. And I was like, no matter if I'm fat or if I'm skinny, everyone freaking hates it. Yeah. And so this was part of the reason I wasn't eating any, like probably eating 20 grams of protein every single day. Yeah. So this would have totally changed my life. So with water, say thirsty, are you really big on like drink this much water? Are you like one of the hydration people? Are you like, oh, drink like gallon a day and you're fine? Like, what does that look like? I'm not like huge on it where it's like, I think it's the most important thing ever, but it will, if you are significantly hydrated, you're going to have much better mood throughout the day. Like you can get kind of like brain foggy and cranky and just kind of feel like shit if you don't drink enough water. And that could also carry on to your sleep. So a lot of people have sleep issues, especially nowadays with blue lights with your phone and all the different things. It's like studios with lights pumping on you all day. With yeah, like just stay hydrated. hydrated. I think most people kind of freak out about drinking a lot of water going into bedtime. And it's like, I think all of us wake up and pee anyway. So like, fuck it. <laughs> like, just get it in. Um, I can't even like I've stopped drinking water after like four or 5 p.m. And I still wake up and pee. Or if I drink a glass before I go to bed, I still wake up and pee. So like, I don't even care. But this, this is wild. So I'm, you met my wife over like go-karting with a bunch of entrepreneurs. And I was like, man, like this would be, I'd love to interview that guy. I think it'd be super interesting for the guys. So uh, first off, I appreciate you being here. Yeah. Like jump straight into a few questions because I thought it was really cool. And I have tons left. But one thing I would love to do is I, I, I really enjoy, like there's a lot of information out there. And the problem is, is that if people don't trust someone, it's really difficult to like consume the information. So I found that for people that I've either invested in, cause that's like a bridge of trust. Like I'm like, Hey, here's my money. I trust this. I'm going to go for it. And they talk to me a different way. For the most yeah. part, finding the people that you trust is really, really difficult. And one of the ways I like to create that is like through going back and figuring out how did you get to where you're at now? And you were talking about, and I'll quote this. You said you had one of the most interesting backstories of anyone in the health industry. It's like, oh man, I put, put you on the spot, uh, but I'm super interested in it. You talked about like helicopters and you talked about why, and you talked about all these crazy things, Olympic stuff. Uh, so I'd love to know what was the journey that gave you the epiphany to go into what you're doing now? All right. So I'm going to give you the this fastest crash course as possible that I can. So my whole journey started off as I thought I was going to be a pilot. So I went in, I flew, I, I moved from New Jersey to Hawaii to become a helicopter pilot. So like, what, did you have like a certain type though? Were you like, oh, I'm just going to like go fly people around, put it like little like hour long trips, or I'm going to like rent it out like Vegas style. Or I'm going to drive people to EDM. I wasn't really like sure. I just wanted to be a pilot. Like when I was like 16, my uncle uh, gave me a flight lesson and he was a pilot and we flew Cessnas together. And then eventually I fell asleep flying an airplane because I was like, this is super boring. Like I loved flying, but I don't think people realize like flying an airplane is like no different than like driving a bus on the road. Like eventually, you know, the road gets boring and it's just boring. And like, there's really not a lot going on on the plane, but in a helicopter, both feet are moving, both hands are moving consistently and you can be a little bit more aware. So my plane pilot at the time, my instructor was like, you should probably try helicopters. It might keep you a little bit more awake. Like you're like a super ADD type of guy. And I just think you'd like it more. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm a young kid. I'm in, in high school and thinking about going into college and what I want to do with my life. And I was like, this would be cool. Like being a pilot, be that's a cool gig. So I moved there, you know, got my license. I was a helicopter pilot at the age of 18, which at the time they, they were telling me is like the youngest pilot they had ever seen. And then they started going down the list of like, you know, here's some of the jobs that you could have. And here's some other qualifications that you need to progress in this career. And then I was like, you know, what sounds the coolest is probably the military route. And then they're like, all right, well, you need to go to school and get all these degrees, like get your bachelor degree at least to fly in the military as a officer. So then 
I'm like, all right, I'll go back to school. So I, I start attending the school there in Hawaii. It's called Kapiolani Community College by like the, di if, for those of you who've ever been to Hawaii, it's by the, the volcano Diamond Head in on Oahu. So I'd go there to school every day. And then um, eventually I met a kid in, a, in the dorms I was staying in. He played football for University of Hawaii. And he just looked like, I had never seen anything like him. He was like straight out of a magazine. He had like the veins popping out and all this stuff. And I'm young and I'm just like, wow, this kid looks insane. So he asked me to go to the gym with him eventually. We, we wound up like seeing, I see him at some parties or something in the dorms and blah, blah, blah. And eventually I start training with him a lot. We go to the gym and I start really loving the gym. And eventually we go to the gym one day and there's a sign that says like, try out for the USA Olympic bobsled and skeleton team. And I'm like, hey, Eric, you think, uh, you think I can go check this out? And he's like, yeah, dude, check it out. <clears throat> so I went and eventually, and meanwhile, in just a few months time, I had been I had gone from just like a regular surfer kid flying helicopters and it would literally within like six months, I was as strong and powerful as my friend who was playing division one football, who was an all American. And he's like, dude, you're a freak of nature. You should definitely do this. So I went and I got the highest scores in the country. And then, and it was like a, it was like a, there was like a one rep max power clean, like a three rep max back squat, a bunch of sprint drills, all this stuff. So before I knew it, I was telling all my friends in Hawaii that I was leaving and I was going to the Olympics. And they were all like, dude, where did this come from? <laughs> oh my God, it's freaking hilarious. So, do you remember your list? So in six months, you said? Yeah, it was very quick. And, and, and did you like kind of work out a little bit before then? I did work out a little bit, but I didn't really know what I was doing. This is the first time I was working out with someone who knew what they were doing. And um, it was just like, I was getting stronger and stronger and faster. And he was trying to get me to play football with the Hawaii football team. He's like, dude, you should come walk on the football team. You'd have so much fun. That, you know, what's crazy about that is that how important is that for people that go to the gym? I remember I used to get all frustrated because I'd be like, there's people that go to the gym for like 30 years and they look the same. Like oh, every family oh, member right. I know for the most part that like goes to the gym, they just aren't as fat. And so I'd be like, oh, like, so even for you, like you were kind of going to the gym but you didn't really know like the intensity that you should have or like what you should do or what day, like all those different things. It's very interesting how dramatic your results were. And again, you like maybe have some genetic potential that far outweighs some other people, obviously like more than I'm sure the other people put in the work for more time than six months or nine months yeah. to go after that Olympic team. Yeah. Everyone has their own genetic potential that's better than where they're at right now. That's very interesting. Well, if you even just look at a, a timeline of history, like every sport, everyone's getting faster and stronger and this and that, because we just know more. Yep. So now we have more knowledge that's trickling down into like eventually high school and this and that. And I mean, the amount of high school people we have going immediately into the pro sports now is crazy. So it's just, it's just more knowledge. And then do you have access to it? It's the same with business. Like, you know, I have never seen so many kids that are like 20 years old now making millions of dollars. Whereas when I was younger, like that wasn't even an option. So it's just more information is out there. Total, I mean, dude, when I saw people making hundred or $10,000 a month selling things online, I was like, should I ask for their picture? Like when I was 20 years old, I get into business. I was like, holy crap. Now you're right. There's like little kids. I, I mean, I, I met a kid that made his first million by 16. I met oh, another kid yeah. that was 16 and already had like $2.4 million in Bitcoin at the time. That'd be $24 million in Bitcoin now. And so it's like, what the freaking heck is going on around here? Like this is wild. So I totally, I a hundred percent agree. And you have people running four minute miles in high school as well, which was physically impossible in the world's eyes, which everything's impossible until it's possible until it's done. Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely wild. So keep, keep going with your story. This is very interesting. So you're okay, like, so, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're deciding you're going to go to the Olympics. Yep. So I moved to Utah. I am. And that's I because there's snow Virginia. there, right? Like this is like bobsledding, you said? Yeah, it's a way different lifestyle. <laughs> like what, what part, part of the bobsledding were you? Were you like the back seat, like the front seat? So I originally started on a sports called Skeleton, which is head first down the track. So I did that for three years. Is, it, is this like driving? Like this is like the front or how does that work? 
I mean, you're laying on your stomach. Your your chin's about two, three inches off the ice. All by yourself? By yourself. Oh, so this is like solo dive. Yep. Let's like face first down the biggest water slide you've ever seen, but way crazier. I wasn't big enough for bobsled at the time. So I started with skeleton. I thought skeleton was cooler actually, because it was just me and it was just a really cool sport. And then after about three years, I bumped up to bobsled. I usually just tell people bobsled because most people don't know what skeleton is. So I'm like, I was on the bobsled team. Dude, that's um, insane. So as I was doing this and living in Utah, I eventually got to the point where the Olympics were around the corner. I got injured and like did everything I could to get back in shape, to be able to make it to the Olympics. And I was just a little bit short and it just like, was like, do I want to do this for another four years? Do I, you know, it's just a really long time. Nobody cares about any of the winter Olympic sports until the Olympic year. So you have like three and a half years where no one gives a damn about you. And then it's like, and you're not making any money, everything's getting put on hold. So I was like, well, maybe I'll still go into the military. Like that'd be something that'd be kind of cool to do. So to get ready for the military, maybe I'll, I'll go try this CrossFit thing that people have been telling me to do and get me in shape for the military. So I go to my first gym and I remember doing my first workout and the guy there was like looking at me like, oh, this guy is going to be great. Like I so pumped this guy walked in the door and he was, he asked me to stay after class and was like, Hey, I'd love for you to train with me and blah, blah, blah. I think you'd be a great athlete. And I'm like, no, I don't even really want to do this. Like I just want to do it for training. And then, um, He's like, yeah, we'll and see. And was this like time. your physique or something? He's like, oh, this guy looks like. Yeah, I was like stacked. Like you could tell like I was an athlete, whereas the people. And did, was this after your before. workout? Because you already knew like some of the Olympic lifts and stuff like that. So you were like solid on all that stuff. Just like the format that they did things was different. So you were already like pretty gifted in those areas. Well, yeah. And then he has like this intro class where he expects to kill everybody. And I just like crushed it. And then he's just like, he was just like super pumped. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I wound up working out with him at his gym and I wound up training classes at his gym. And then I was in like every, every single article was like, Hey, new guy on the scene. He's insane. Like I was beating all the best times in the world. All this stuff was going on. And then I wound up moving to California because I hated Utah. I just like really wanted, I always wanted to live in California. So I did, and I moved out here, and I wound up managing a gym, and then I wound up going to all the big, big championships, and my, my best year ever, where I felt like I was in the best shape, I went to a competition, and I was in the middle of an event, and these people just kept telling me that everything I was doing was wrong. So they, you know, you're doing a deadlift, and they say, no rep, no rep, no rep, like it doesn't count. So I freak out and I tell this guy that I'm going to kill him. And I'm like, just completely going mental. It's all over YouTube. And it was a, it was a super big deal at the time. And I remember the next day, like my Instagram, I had gotten like 10,000 followers. There was like an article on, you know, the CrossFit website saying that like, this guy is like the Johnny McEnroe of the sport. He's a maniac and he's ruining the sport. And like, <laughs> all this stuff. And it was just like, really putting my, like my mom called me and she was crying. She's like, Oh my God, your life is over. Like, you're never going to be able to do anything in the sport and like, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, I had given everything for the sport. And I was like, fuck, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> and then like a whole series of events happened and, and I was, was training people at a gym that I was working at in Orange County here and eventually met a guy who was really, like he really wanted me to open my own gym and I didn't want to open my own gym. I was like, dude, I make enough money training. Like I don't like owning a gym sounds awful. And eventually we wound up opening a gym together. That gym is called Chalk Performance Training. And now it's literally one of the biggest, like biggest brands in the sport like in the world. And I was like one of the first people to start kind of like online programming. So at the time, every CrossFit gym, and for those of you who are listening right now, maybe you, you know what I'm talking about. The last, probably until like three years ago, 
every single gym would put their workout online on the website. So you'd go yeah, to that, the- was, that was the workouts I did for like three years, the strength ones, at least it was like, do eight sets of three reps at 80% of your max. And I was like, that was my pre-workout to whatever workout I had at the CrossFit gym. You could go to any website and they'd have the workout posted and you could just do it. So it was like, why would I go to that gym and pay money when they put the workout on there? Like, obviously you're getting the coaching and the community and whatever, but like these gyms are expensive. They're like a couple hundred bucks versus like 24 hours, 20. So like when I opened my gym, First off, I wanted the most beautiful gym ever. So I, I spent like a few hundred thousand dollars, which at the time, everybody was only spending like 50, 60 grand. So you walk in my place, it looks way different. It's very, very nice. And I was like, I'm never putting my workouts on the website. And people called all the time. What's the workout? You know, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, it's come in, come in and I will let you know what it is. And then eventually this lady from out of town, she traveled a lot for work. And she's like, every time I come to your gym, you have the coolest workouts. I think you should put these online. And I was like, do you think anybody would really buy that though? I was like, they can go to so many websites for free. I just don't like putting them on there because I feel like it's ridiculous. Like it's, it's all of my hard work and I'm just giving it away. She's like, you should try it. I'm like, all right. At the time I was paying myself $4,000 a month from the gym. Like that's what I was getting. Like that was, that was the salary. And then I do training and this and that, and maybe make seven, 8,000 bucks. And, um, which as an athlete, I was making like even less. So like I was stoked on that. So the first week that I put the workouts online, I remember we had an app in the gym and I basically just created two locations so that the workouts would go to the gym and then the other workouts would go online. And then if you were an online member, you would download the same app that everybody has in the gym. So it wasn't extra work for me. It was just like, if you want to follow what we do, here you go. And then I remember the very first day that I launched it, I had made the same amount of money that I was going to make owning the gym. I made 4,000, I made exactly 4,000 bucks. And I was like, well, shoot. I'm like, I'm going to get $4,000 every month now. I'm like, this is pretty crazy. And at the time I was a little bit self-conscious. I kind of, uh, I talked about this with Alex's podcast, kind of like, a, a, there's always a belief in yourself that's a limiting barrier like it's a governor on how how much farther you can go because once you break a belief system you can obviously just figure out a way to blast through anything that you thought was possible so eventually i only marketed it like once a week i would say something there was no swipe ups on instagram yet i would just say hey if you guys want to follow the workouts go here and like I was saying, because I wasn't the best athlete in the world, I wasn't the guy that won the world championships, which is what I always aspire to do. I never felt like I was the guy you should buy the programs from. I just felt like, you know, I make really good workouts. I feel like I'm really gifted at this. Like here's my workouts, but I always felt self-conscious. Like, man, if, if one of these other people did it, I'd be like, yeah, like that's who should do it. I didn't really feel like I should have been the person at the time, which I wish I didn't think that way. But eventually it got up to making like 20, 30, $40,000 a month. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, this is so much money. I should probably start like believing in this more. Like everybody else is tagging it and talking about it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then eventually, you know, now it's a seven figure business, but I still don't really market it that much. And if I was to tell you why you would hate me, but it's because I hate my website. I hate my, I hate my app. I hate all these things about it but I personally hate it. And I'm sure everybody else thinks it's fine and I should probably just keep hammering it. But this is so real quick. There's like so many things I want to go into. The first yeah, couple of sure. things is let's just like redo the website and app, dude. Like, I don't know, pay my team cost to build it all or something. But outside of that, it's like, what was one, like you kept doing it even though you felt that way. And obviously maybe not to the extent that you'd like to, Meaning like talking about it once a week, like it still did something, but what was like the mental breakthrough, unless you're still going through it right now of like, for me, like I lost 60 pounds, but there was like Mr. Olympia and like all these other people that had $37 programs with like 2 million followers. And I was like, if I sell a $37 program, like I'm going to make like $400 a month. And like, why would they buy it for me? Cause they should buy it from everyone else. Cause they have like all the credentials. 
And so like I went through the, a similar thing where I was like, I need to create a whole new product because I can't compete with like the current products in the market. So I went with like concierge $7,500 programs. And like, that was my like workaround. Cause I'm like, no one's doing this. So I'm not like in competition with Mr. Olympia with this. And so for you, like, what was the thing that clicked for you? Cause yeah, you, you weren't CrossFit games champion or, you know, Bob sledding gold medalist and all the things that you had done, like you were, you had failed. Right. And I'm talking about in your mind, cause you're like shredded and like 0.001% broke world records, <laughs> but like, you know, you were, you were the, you're washed up, dude. You were washed up. I'm just kidding. But yeah. like, that's what you would think in your mind, right? Like, how did you overcome that and continue to promote through it? Or was it something where you were like, you really didn't, well, weren't able to give it to your all? Once I started to do really well, everybody else in the space was like, I want to do what Ryan's doing. Like, even, even like the world champion guys were, were like, what the fuck is he doing? He's making more money than if I was competing and making, you know, winning all the championships and stuff. So a lot of these people would actually message me in, in my Instagram and be like, Hey Ryan, like I've seen what you've been doing. Like, it's really cool. And like a lot of times I'd be like, yo, I remember you from competing and you were a dick. I'm not helping you. Yeah. yeah. And some people <laughs> I'd be like, Oh yeah, you're cool. Like, I'll tell you like kind of like some things that you can do. And what year did you start this? I want to say it's been like three years. So if it's 2021 now, so 2019. So wild dude. And so this but, is the, so you have chalk performance training. And then people could check out the app too, which I'm pretty sure that's the first one. They can check out the app there, jimryan.com. They could check out all your stuff as well. Yep. Um, especially that's so wild. So tell me, I want to go back to this video real quick. You had this YouTube video. I'm definitely got to watch it. And it's like, like Ryan Fisher, no rep. And it's just like me completely freaking out. And how many years ago was that? 2013, I think. Cool. So that was like, that was actually like when I started doing CrossFit. So I maybe even saw it at the time. Who knows? It was a yeah, big they, the, time. the judges are sometimes like super ridiculous, right? Where you're like doing yeah. everything, but they're also just regular people a lot of times where they can just like be very like crazy critical about some things and then for other people not, which is such a, was probably a big flaw back then. And you just like yeah, it's a huge popularity contest, this, that. Yeah, that's so that's yeah, that sucks. So you freaked out on this guy. Now looking back though. You said you grew 10,000 followers and your, but everyone in your family was like, oh my gosh, you screwed up. Was it actually a screw up? Cause sometimes like I I've come from a motocross background being in Southern California, there was this kid named Jason Lawrence that like got banned from racing, but everyone loved this kid because he'd pick fights on the track and he would call people out. He wasn't the nice, like great comp competitor out there tonight. Everyone's doing great. He was the guy that was like, man, I don't know. Just like none of these guys have anything for me. It just really was an easy win. I don't really know what else to say about it. And ev like all the people in the community loved him because he brought like some flavor and like something exciting rather than the normal, like, yeah, I want to thank my sponsors, you know, freaking whatever the, no, like the supplement brand that all of them used to use back in the day and whatever. It's like, did you feel that that was actually a negative thing in the long run or was it actually like positive? No, I thought it was very positive. Like the same thing, like people, people loved like the energy that I was putting out there because I was different. And I thought the 10,000 followers was going to be like a bunch of messages from people like you're an asshole. And it was more like, dude, I think you're awesome. And I think that what you did was like totally fine. Like, you, you know, you were doing everything right and they were, they screwed you over and blah, blah, blah. And then, um, yeah, that was when I just, I eventually like a lot of people on podcasts wanted, you know, wanted to have me on and all these different things. And it just kind of, kind of snowballed into like, actual success but i think more than anything that i'm thankful for at that time is i have a bunch of kind of like knee injuries and different things from i've just been like a maniac my whole life just like snowboard accidents bike accidents just all this stuff and my body's been kind of like breaking down and if it wasn't for that moment i think i would have always been that guy just trying to always chase that first place prize, like always win the world championship type of guy. I think I would have always been like that. And I think I would have always put my life on hold. You know, like the idea of having money was always cool, but I've always like, I always wanted to win. And, you know, when that happened, I knew that this was probably like my last sport that I was going to compete in very seriously. And after that moment, I knew that I'd never really be able to compete and get to that level because I was kind of like hated in the sport in terms of the judges and the actual sport. The people loved me, 
but the sport didn't. And they would never allow me to do well because I went to two more big championships after that. And my treatment was just awful. Like they pretty much did the same thing over and over again. And I was like, all right, I quit. Like, fuck this. I'm going to just, I'm going to go the business route. You know, Chalk Online is starting to, to grow and blah, blah, blah. And looking back now is the best thing that ever happened to me because I would have been a completely different person. Now, how do you look at CrossFit as like a whole enterprise? I don't really know what I think about it. Like I took CrossFit off the name of my gym. It's Chalk Performance Training now. Yeah, which is smart and anyway, business-wise. It's good. I did that in the beginning. I actually never used the word CrossFit ever. Even on the first day I've been o- I was open seven years ago. So, because I always knew that something would happen with it. I just, I feel like the way that they train people like on day one is just like not really appropriate. I feel like there's a lot of things about CrossFit that we don't, like people don't need to be doing power cleans and snatches and all the stuff. I like the conditioning training. I like the strength training. I think that anyone could walk in the door and do pretty much all of it except for the Olympic lifts. And I think you give people Olympic lifts and you just hire the injury rate by like a million. And like, if you did a bunch of snatches and a bunch of cleans, you're still not going to look any better, really. Like it's, it's the compound lifts. It's the conditioning, like the high heart rate stuff that's really getting you to change. And I just don't understand why they put that in there. But, you know, you start getting people who drink that Kool-Aid and they never want to put it down. Totally. I mean, that's what we use it as teaching in business all the time. It's like they took people from thinking they needed to go to the gym and lift weights and do cardio to be healthy. And they're like, no, you don't like it's CrossFit. And they're like, what is it? You know, it's like you go to the gym and you lift weights and you do cardio, but like they, they called it like a whole new package, right? For everyone in the world. It was like, this is a brand new thing. Like this is how Navy SEALs train. This is how whatever, like, and people buy into like that new opportunity and, and similar thing with like everything in business. I think they did a good job in that way. It sucks. It was all political for you. Forget you CrossFit. I don't like you anymore because yeah, I'm actually happy the way everything turned out. Like everything turned out just the way that it should. Yeah, totally. Uh, I know that some of my friends used to make fun of who's like the owner of CrossFit again. Greg Glassman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember some of my friends used to make fun of like all those guys, but yeah, I was, I, I loved CrossFit. I still, I love the way I look when I did CrossFit. I dislike the things that I have lingering in my body after like four years of doing six days a week. Um, but man, I think it's awesome what you've done and, and chalked as a company. Like, it's just really cool. First off, it's a sick name, especially cause it's coming around now because now like all the teenager kids look at chalked as like, it's screwed, like throw it away. Like it's like a trending word in general. So like in multiple forms from like chalk to like the other form that's coming out now, phenomenal name. So bring me through some of this stuff with, and I'm just checking time. Cause I'm like, man, this is so fun the workout. So like, I, I want, I'm like here interviewing you for me. Cause I'm like, dude, I want to, I have a gym here, super boring. I'm like, but I don't want to go to CrossFit gym because I'm just like, man, like my, I I've had a neck injury every time I like, I would do deadlifts, but I do deadlifts for like CrossFit time. So I'd be doing like 275 plus 400 meter run or whatever. And then I'd start doing deadlifts too quick. I couldn't move my neck for like two days, but I'm like, Oh, that's just a part of it to like beat the time. And then now Like I I go lift overhead heavy and like, I can't move my neck for two days, like, or four days or six days. Like I can't look left to right. So for you, like you've, you've had injuries. So you've had to work out through injuries and like body breaking down, but also like, I want to hear some of your theories around like nutrition, exercise, like what plans you put people on, not necessarily the injuries, screw that. Like, I don't care about my injuries. I just want to freaking look sexy. Right. So like, tell me some of your stuff that you do for programming or what's the best way to get connected with some of the stuff that you do. So, I mean, I have several different programs on my app now. Like it, it started off as just the CrossFit program. And then another program that I invented kind of called, it's called sweat, which I basically took out all the Olympic lifts from CrossFit. Cause I thought that they were a little bit excessive for most people. And then and do I, you Olympic lift at all anymore? I don't do it anymore now. That's so, you know, like I, I used to, dog sit michael bloodstone that owned barbell shrugged yep and he used to be an olympic lifter and like he's like i don't do any olympic lifts at all he's like it's terrible for you it's like my whole body's jacked up from he's like i just do gymnastics now like he did like 
slow body weight style movements and stuff at the time. So that's wild to hear. That makes me feel good. Cause that's like the one thing that I'm like, it's really hard to find places that you can Olympic lift as well and do high intensity with it. So like that takes a big chunk of it out of it for it's me. It's so, so interesting. Um, you think about something that got so big where it's worth probably billions of dollars now. It's like, and you think about people after sport, how they look and how they feel. And it's like, whenever there's impact involved, it's not going to be good for your joints and, and everything. Like, it's just not. So like you think of Olympic lifting and you're just doing a powerful movement and you're doing it for tons and tons and tons of reps in CrossFit. So like, you know, an Olympic lifter who may have not nearly as much degenerative tissue and stuff after their career, because they're doing like sets of one or two power clean and jerks in their training heavy, you know, we're doing like a hundred power cleans in a workout, like a hundred snatches. And then like, and it's, it's six days a week. You know what I mean? So like how many reps are you doing? You're basically fast forwarding years and years of training that an Olympic lifter would have into like one smaller window and you're just destroying your joints. So the fact that people are doing this like over and over and over, I, 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 I literally am blown away that the, like the amount of gyms that exist still exist. I think about 90% of them should just go away. There's like really, really bad gym owners. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> I started that sweat program is basically what we do in the CrossFit program, but without the Olympic lifts and we do all of the conditioning stuff. And there's no strength either. It's just the conditioning component because a lot of people love that part of CrossFit. But in sweat, the conditioning is always going to be 30 to 40 minutes long. It's long. That's why I call it sweat. Totally. And then the strength and conditioning program is our CrossFit program. And I do it my version. So we barely ever snatch, but we do do cleans. And we focus mainly on squats and presses, like bench presses and strip press. Uh, and then the conditioning components complement whatever we did for strength that day so we have kind of like a body part split like bodybuilding workout with with conditioning and stuff in it so it's that workout program is huge um and then i started to travel a lot once i started to kind of like make a little bit more money and kind of like enjoy my life so i made this other program called the daily d which is it stands for daily dumbbell workout so like no matter which hotel room i was ever in i could do like workout with dumbbells um, so that just turned into like the traveler program, which I still have it. And now it's morphed into like basically a minimal equipment program. So you can do strength training in it. You can do conditioning stuff. And then recently, uh, I just kind of wanted to try to chill on all the super heavy conditioning and just do a little bit more bodybuilding style, but I didn't want to just be like a typical bodybuilder. I wanted to create something new and something cool and fun. Um, like all of my programs, like people will literally message me on Instagram and be like, Hey Ryan, I think someone stole this because like my stuff is so unique that if someone posts it, they're like, yo, that's a Ryan Fisher workout. And like, that's like my goal is to make sure that everyone sees my workouts. So when I built the bodybuilding program, instead of going to the gym and having a leg day and having an arm day and all these different things, like all your traditional splits, I took a full body split. So if you think about, if you have a chest day, you probably do like four or five different exercises that day. And then the next day for, you know, back and biceps, you'd have like seven or eight things you do that day and you leave. So with a full body pro program, you're only picking one exercise per body part. So you do one thing for legs, one thing for biceps, one thing for shoulders, one thing for chest, one for back. You do like six exercises and you're out the door, but you do that every day. So if you think about it, you're like, is that too much? And it's like, no, because if you did one exercise per day, four to five days a week, it's the same as if you did all that in one day, you're just spreading out the actual volume throughout the week. So what does that do? It gives you a little bit more intensity for every movement because you're excited to do it. I haven't done biceps yet. I'm going to crush. I haven't done chest yet. I'm going to kill it. So it's like that for every single movement, you never go to the gym and you're like, oh, fuck, it's leg day. It's like, it's everything today. Yeah. So I, I created this. I mean, th that was something that was already created, but now I like added a little twist to it. So every day we have like two muscle groups that are the focus point where we actually follow a progressive overload system where it's how much weight did you do last week? And we need to lift a little bit more. 
And then all the other movements change every single day. So you won't do the same bicep, like bicep, tricep, like whatever the accessory movements are for the day. You won't even touch those again for like a month. Like crazy. You have two focus points and then everything changes every day. And my rationale behind that is because you're doing new movements, you're more excited because you're not redoing movements. Yeah. And then every Friday, I call it density Friday. And we pick one movement and you do it for as many reps as possible in seven minutes. And then every week, your goal is to pick the same movements that you did last week and just get more reps. So, so have yeah. you been doing this as well? What's that? Have you been doing this as well? This is what I've been doing for like two years. And I've been training now for like an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah. And I look the same as when I used to compete for like four or five hours a day of training. So like, I like, I'm obsessed with it. I call it the full body aesthetics program and it's on the app. And I, I want to say that that's probably the most popular program I have on the app now. Dude, that's, you know, what's funny is I remember messaging Alex Ramosi, a mutual friend of ours. And I go, yo, Alex, like, what's your, like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I just like work out every part of my body every single day. And yeah. I was like, okay, thank you so much. You know, yeah. and like, Alex is also like going, you know, he takes more time yet. The fact that you can, cause he's like diminishing returns still returns. Let's go for it. Like he'll do whatever. Right. But I'm like, man, this is something that I've heard now twice. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's, that's legit. That's more confirmation. Cause I hear from Alex. I'm like, he's a specimen freaking nature, but the fact that you have other people going through it as well, like that's epic. And you're doing it yourself. That's very, very interesting. Cause there's people out there. Like I know uh, one trainer, he has people like do very minimal work, but like hot, very hard, but like three days a week. And it's really weird for me to like work out three days a week and then try just not to eat that much and like do a lot of steps. I don't know. It makes me feel like I'm like out of shape. Even my wife's like, this is so weird. You like go to the gym for 45 minutes, three days a week. And then you like walk 10,000 steps outside of that. And like, I don't know, it just seemed really weird. And this, and it really didn't, I didn't feel like I was getting in better shape. Like it, maybe I was like maintaining some muscle mass, but like, I didn't feel better. Right. Cause you don't do like any high intensity, anything like that. Whereas this, it feels like you're doing enough volume to make you feel like you're really progressing and growing. And it's not just like a marketing thing, you know, cause marketing, I think sounds good to work out three days a week, but this is how many days a week is this? Mine's only four. Oh shoot. Come on. So That's I do pretty doable. Days. I do four days and then I do one. So I still work out five days a week, but that program is four. Yeah. And so when you do the program, it says on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, it says you have an optional day today to do conditioning. So I do one of the workouts from the sweat program. Crazy, dude. That's or intense. I'll just go do like hill sprints or something like that. But I, I do one conditioning day on top of the four days of lifting. So what do you think right now for on the business side and just in general? Because you're like, you've had this really interesting progression of like, you train with this guy and then you were like, Oh, I'm really fit. And like, this is crazy. And then you like go Olympic team and then you start a gym and then you're like, oh, I'll do an online program. It's kind of like in the moment, like, Oh man, like that's what it seems like at least. Right. It's like, Oh, there's an opportunity here. Like I'm going to take it just really, really cool. Yet. I'm sure that there's also been some of this stuff where you're like, I really want to build this thing. Or like, how do we build the gym or how do we build the online following? What has been some of the ways outside of screaming at the CrossFit reps person uh, to that you've done to like get more eyeballs on the things that you're doing and anything that you've done to like, how have you created something that people actually really desire? Has it been that? It seems like it's like you love it and it seems to be a solution for other people as well. It doesn't seem like you've been someone who's like, huh, like what's the thing that everyone wants to buy, even though I think it's a piece of crap. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like you're like, this works. I like this. Like, I'm going to put this out for other people. So eyeballs, and then also creating a product that people desire that obviously is doing really, really well. So, I mean, are you asking me basically, like, what do I think would fast track everything? Just like what's worked for you. Like, if you want to do fast track, like, that's fine. But I'm like, man, like, at, like, how much of what you do is like, all right, how do we get more people to see what we're doing? Or are you just like, doing your thing and it's just naturally happening. I'm really interested in like 
how you're getting people to see what you're doing. And also, I don't think that, I don't think a lot of what I've done would have gotten into as many people's like, I don't think as many people would have seen what I'm doing and heard what I'm doing if I didn't just get out there and meet more people. So I think that there was like one particular podcast that I went on and it was actually Barbell Shrug, to be honest, on Mike Bledsoe's show. So when I went on his show and talked about my story and talked about the online program, I think I made like $10,000 the next day. Like people just signed up like crazy. And then I used to think that I was doing really well. And then I met someone on my podcast who was selling online programs and all this stuff. And they were making way more than me and they were using ads and different things. And I didn't know anything about that. So I asked them after the show, Hey, can I use your people for running ads? Like, would you mind? Or this person was selling pregnancy programs. Like we were selling different things. It didn't matter. So I started selling ads and like all of my books and different things that I was and challenges and different things that I was running in my gym. I started doing online and that started making like a whole bunch of money. So I was like, Oh wow, this is really cool. I didn't know that. And then I thought that I was, you know, doing really good. And then I meet someone like Alex or someone who is making like, you know, tens of millions of dollars a year. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm still not even close to like what's possible. So I think that reading books is great. And there's a lot of nuggets in books that you will never hear anyone say, and it's going to click for you in a certain way. Sometimes people just say things and it's just boom and it sticks there and it never leaves. But you have equal things that happen in person that will happen that you will never hear or read in a book. And it will also shatter your beliefs. Like when you actually see somebody who is making more money than you or has something that you've dreamed about or something and they're literally doing it and you're not reading about it. Cause like when you read about it, it still has like a non, it still has like a fictional non-fictional feel. But when you see it and you can actually like be part of it, um, you, you know that like it's absolutely possible. And I feel like you have to have the, the two different things. Like you can't be a couch potato. You got to like pull out the audio book or, or read. And I think that you can't get stuck in your own little, like I know everything world and just accept that other people do know more than you. I think trusting people nowadays is pretty hard. There's a lot of people saying they can help you, but uh, I mean, that's like saying that you're never really going to go on a date because like, you're going to have some bad ones, you know, or like, it's, it's, it's tough. Like, I feel like there, I, I probably had like four or five people in my life that made an a enormous, enormous difference to me. Part of my story that I didn't say was my business partner in my gym at the time, he was the guy who made my space. So he knew a lot about business and knew a lot about character, people and stuff like this that. Is Tom. So his name is Aaron. So Tom is everybody's first friend. Yeah, yeah. And the guy, Aaron Sloman, who built the actual operating software is my business partner now. That's awesome. But, uh, but yeah, you definitely need to get out there and meet as many people as possible. I think that opens up your eyes to so much. I think it makes a huge, huge difference. That's like the number one thing I always tell everybody. Right now, I think the biggest limiting factor for me is I take on way too much work and I literally have like mental breakdowns once a month where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I need someone to help me. But like, I don't know. I'm not very good at hiring people to help me with stuff. Like, I don't know a good person to make my website, like to fix my website, to make an app for me. Like, I don't know. Um, I don't really have the time to show someone how to program the workouts that I program. So I'll just keep adding more programs. Like I started with two programs, like I said, and now I have six. And now I make, I spend hours every single day seven days a week making workouts. Like every workout on my app for the last three years has only been for me, not anybody else ever. And That's amazing. <laughs> just like to find the people and trust the people and all that. Like, I'm just, I'm just not very good. Like that's my biggest weakness by far. I love it, man. Thank you for sharing that. And one thing that you said about like books and people, we have a quote in our community that's some things are better caught than taught. And it's like the difference you could read about a workout program, but like, it doesn't make you more fit. Uh, you could study Arnold Schwarzenegger all day, but like until you try to do a lift, you don't even know how to do it. It's like watching basketball players. You're like, oh, like 
I got it. Like do the triangle, put the elbow in. All right. And then you go do it the first time and you feel like an idiot. Cause you still like, no matter how much, you know, it, you haven't done it. Whereas if you just played with a professional basketball team every single day, along with being a student and learning some stuff, like, but if you play with them every day, you're going to get really freaking good. And like, that's like the benefit that's like being around the good people or just even this conversation, right? Like knowing all the people is that's like my life. Right. So like every single thing that you just talked about, I'm like, Oh yeah. Like I know all the people that do all that. Cause that's like what I'm really good at, but you could have read in a book, like, all right, or Googled what's the best people to do this and done all the research. Whereas people have connections to people and good people. So that was awesome, man. I appreciate it. Go check him out guys. And all of the stuff that he's doing. I know that for me, the things that you're doing, the way that you talk is something that I really vibe with as well. So I appreciate your time, man. And we'll have to come back and do something else because I have like 50 other questions. Yeah. Uh, actually, real quick, if we could just end it with this. I had a couple questions that some of the guys in the community sent and we'll kind of like blast through them real quick. Uh, number one was from Eric and he says, when did you realize that you're a mover and shaker in your industry? Oh, um, I think that once like some of those like world champion guys in the sport started to reach out to me and they're like, Hey dude, like, can you help me kind of do some stuff like that? I was like, Oh wow. Like I did something really cool. Like I want what this person has, but they actually want what I have. And I think that's really cool. And for them to even reach out to me out of all the other people, I thought was a pretty interesting moment. Totally. Uh, and we'll just do one more and we'll save the last two, maybe for the next one that we do is if you were a nutrition coach for athletes, college pro, pro et cetera, what would their diet look like? For athletes, huh? Um, I would definitely have them on higher carbohydrates and higher protein and lower, probably a little bit lower on the fat scale. Lower fat, higher uh, carbs, higher protein. So tell me this then for the people that aren't, but they're doing like four days a week doing your program, what does that look like compared to those athletes? They would probably, so I would probably ask them what their goal was first. If they wanted to build muscle, it would definitely be higher carb. If they wanted to lose body fat, it could be either one. And when people say, well, how do I know which one to choose? I would ask you like, what sounds better for breakfast, eggs and bacon, or like a bowl of oatmeal and like a banana. You know what I mean? Like if you're someone who loves the sound of carbohydrates, then you should do a carbohydrate split. If you're someone who loves the sound of fat, then you should do a low carb, high fat split. But in the end of the day, as long as you get less calories in, it really just depends on how you prefer. Like some people don't like the sound of carbs. Some people have, they, they just have different insulin resistance in their body and they just, they eat it and it just makes them feel different. And I mean, for a long time, I was very, very high fat, super low carb, and I looked insane. And then after a while, I just got bored of it. And I just, now I'm high carb and low fat, but like every other week I'll switch still. And I just kind of like, whatever. Cause I kind of know how much I'm consuming all the time. So you're looking at like, all right, I'm getting my protein in. And then for the other two, as long as I'm consuming like the amount of food that I want to, I, it's not as big of a deal as other people. Some people, are, oh my gosh, you ate carbohydrates. Like you're going to get fat. And then other people are like, if you eat so much fat, like look how gross that is. You're eating bacon, whatever. So you're, you're just, just saying like, oh, cool. that doesn't matter. Once you give yourself a set of rules, you're just following them. And that's just pretty much what makes it work. It's not that keto is better than this one or that one. It's just that you have these rules to follow and it just makes everything easier. So awesome. I think it's rule every time I eat is to start with protein because you know, if you have a bunch of mashed potatoes on your plate and chicken and you eat the mashed potatoes first, the chicken doesn't sound that good afterwards. But if you eat the chicken first, which is the most important thing for you to keep your muscle and potentially grow it, then you'll eat the, the mashed potatoes second, but you might not even finish them. So like, that's why I tell everyone, like, as soon as you start eating, just eat the protein first, even if you're starving. And that's why what happens, like when you wind up starving yourself for a really long time, the only thing you can think about is, is fucked up foods. Like you're only thinking about carbohydrates and fats. Like you're never thinking about protein. hundred percent. And so you should write a book, eat the protein <laughs> first. That's the title. Eat the protein first. I, I love it, dude. I would love that. Heck yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you so much again. Appreciate you coming on the show and Thank giving you. knowledge to the guys. I'm excited to implement it. Take it away, guys. Make sure to implement the things that he's talking about. Go check out the things that he's doing. Thanks again, man. Thank you.